So a person who's dealing in the streets, slinging drugs, getting high, wilding out, when he gets caught and he goes to prison or he gets shot or he's stabbed, may Allah protect all of us. When that happens, that Musiba happened as a result, that trial, that fitna happened as a result of, you know, for what the person did. Alhamdulillah, alhamdulillah, wa salatu wa salam ala rasulillah amma ba'd. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Wa alaikum salam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh wa maghfiratuh. Barakallahu feekum, alhamdulillah. We are here, episode two of the Glad Tidings podcast. Alhamdulillah, we had a, a really, really good episode last one and this one, inshallah, is going to be very, very good. So today the topic is the trials and tribulations of the believer. And you have myself, Jubed, Brother Salahuddin, and we have Sheikh Abu Osama al-Dhahabi, Hafizahullah. Alhamdulillah. Alhamdulillah. I wanted to say right off the top, as I said when I came in here, I've been here 12 years ago, but um, I think taking advantage of the airwaves is one of the ways to get our dawah out far and wide. As Allah mentioned to Ibrahim, way back then he told Ibrahim, make the adhan. And he didn't have these optic fibers and all of this stuff, but he did what Allah commanded him to do. Now we have billions and billions of people who have gone to uh, hajj. You guys continue to keep up the good work. May Allah bless you with your content. Amen. Just keep it positive and keep it pure. All right? Amen. Alhamdulillah. Thanks for inviting me. Alhamdulillah, it's, it's a pleasure, it's a pleasure, and it's a very, very important topic. I think with the pandemic, with everything that's happened over the past few years, I'm sure a lot of people have gone through a lot of trials and tribulations, obviously including yourself and, and us as well. So we want to hit this topic, inshallah, and, and, and see where we go from there. So the first question, inshallah, if you're okay with that, is why do trials and tribulations befall a believer? Uh, if we look at the book of Allah and the authentic sunnah of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi the answer to that becomes quite clear. And uh, there are many reasons. Uh, just to name a few, Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala cleans people up through trials and tribulations. So the believers never afflicted with hum or gham or nasab, you know, being tired, anxiety, worries. He is not afflicted with... Um, even a prick, prick in him, except that that's going to, to be a kafara for him. So if he is getting those things in the dunya, then it frees him up for being responsible for getting punished for them in the hereafter. So the Prophet told the people, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, إِذَا أَرَادَ اللَّهُ لِلْعَبْدِ خَيْرَ عَجَّلُهُ فِي الدُّنْيَا قَبْلِ الْآخِرَةِ If Allah wants good for a servant, he'll try him in the dunya. Before the hereafter. Another issue is, in our religion, is that issue that we have, actions speak louder than words. Mm. So the three of us, I mean, my mother's alive. I don't know what your mom Duke situation is. But if I truly love my mother, then I have to show and prove. I just can't say mm. I love my mother. Although it's important to say. The man came and said, Ya Rasulullah, tell me something. I can only ask you and nobody else. He said, Qul. I meant to be that. Say I believe in Allah. So you have to say. Saying is important. To come into the deen, you have to say the shahada. But the actions are ablaq min al a'mal. They um, speak louder than words. So the people who say that they are Muslims, Allah mentioned the hasib al nas and yutraku and yuqulu amenna wa hum la yuftanun. Do the people think they're just going to be left alone by saying, I believe in Allah? You're just going to be left alone. Nah, you're going to be tested. You're going to be tested. So we have some people, when they put to the test, they crack and they bust because, you know, it's the nature. They say that pressure busts pipes, and that's real. And I've seen how people were questioned by the authorities, and they folded under the questioning. They weren't even guilty of things, mm -hmm. not to mention those who are guilty. And just as a side point, I say to all of our Shabbat, the streets have no love for you. Mm. There's no love in those streets. And when you get caught and your boys get caught, they're going to rat you out. Mm. They're going to rat you out. 
So I just had to put that in there because we have so much anti-social behavior going on with our with our Shabbat. So the point is, Allah he tests those people to know those, as he said, Allah will know through these trials and tribulations who are those who are saying the truth. They're really about it. And those who are just lying from the munafiqeen, from the du'afa, from the chumps and the punks and so forth and so on. So those are two main reasons. Another very important reason is what Allah said in the Quran. وَمَا أَصَابَكُمْ مِن مُصِيبَةٍ إِلَّا بِمَا كَسَبَتْ أَيْدِيكُمْ وَيَعْفُوا عَنْ كَثِيرٍ There's no catastrophe that befalls you except from what your hands put forth. And Allah, and Allah forgives a lot. So a person who's dealing in the streets, slinging drugs, getting high, walling out, when he gets caught, when he goes to prison, or he gets shot, or he's stabbed, may Allah protect all of us. Amen. When that happens, that musibah happened as a result, that trial, that fitna happened as a result of, you know, for what the person did. did yeah. So his sister gets married to a dude, and she doesn't do her due diligence. She gets married without a wali, and then she finds out that she married a psychopath, a real Freddy Krueger. A real Freddy Cougar. And she said, woe is me. Woe is me. I'm the poor bunny rabbit. No, sister. You're not the poor bunny rabbit. You were supposed to open your eyes and get a welly because that's his job to vet this dude. Mm. So there are many reasons for trials and tribulations, man. May Allah protect us and save us uh, Amen. and help Amen. us to be successful in our trials and tribulations. Amen. Amen. Just a follow-up. So you mentioned a few different reasons. Uh, one is... Like you said, Allah wants to forgive you. And another one could be that it's because of what we've done, our sins. So is there a way of knowing you know, why you're going through trials and tribulations? Or is there a benefit in knowing that at all? And sometimes you can know because it's so obvious and it's so clear. Mm. Uh, one of the characteristics that I try to uh, inculcate within myself, and we all have good qualities and bad qualities, but one of the things that I try to do is never blame other people. Mm. Even when other people do me dirty, yeah, I put him in that position. Had I not put him in that position, he wouldn't have been in a position to do me dirty. So I'm not going to try to waste my time with blaming everybody else. I mean, that's when they really do me dirty. So sometimes um, we may know and sometimes we don't know. Allah mentioned in the Quran in Ayatul Kursi, يَعْلَمُ مَا بَيْنَ أَيْدِيهِمْ Allah knows what is in front of them. وَمَا خَلْفُهُمْ he knows everything about what's going on, every detail about them. And they don't know except what he allows them to know. So sometimes it's really clear that this trial and tribulation is a result of what I've done. Some of the said, if you say, I can tell that I disobeyed the lies or jail by what jumps off and what happens between me and my wife, me and my child. Me and my riding beast. So a person, you know, he has to get to work, has to get to the interview or something like that. And his wheels, you know, his whip is not working. Mm. He got some problems, you know. Uh, the salaf was so in tune, some of them, with a zuhd and ibadah, that he said, I know this is from what, what I've done. Mm. But sometimes, like in the case of the Nabi, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, in the case of the Nabi, and he's the akmal al-khalq, and the hub al khalq to Allah Azza wa Jal, his trials and tribulations came as a result of his deen. As a result of his deen. The hadith is clear. The prophets get the most trials and tribulations. Then the people call into the level of their deen. So sometimes we know and sometimes we don't know. And just to, you know, uh, just to carry on, Sheikh, as well, um, in the hadith is mentioned. The word salaba, and I just want to understand, and just inshallah to explain to the people, like for inkana fi dini salaba tanzili fi balai, and um, many people have come to me before and they've said to me, you know, I don't understand, like if Allah subhanahu wa taala loves you, and he he trials you and tests you with something, and why does he then increase that for you if you're good in that test? So is it like, can you explain it to the people, inshallah? Barakallahu well, we have, you know, as Muslims, the Muslim is the person who is mustaslim to the, you know, fact that Allah has created him and he's in control. So the ayah said, Yaf'alu ma yasha. Or he said, 
لا يسألوا عما يفعل وهم يسألون Allah is not asked why he does what he does but they will be asked so we just have to fall back to the black and get with the program so Allah Azawajal's prophet came with a religion sallallahu alayhi wasallam that helps us clearly understand that no one here is in a position to say that he's really on it mm. and again this is why i categorically reject the dawa of the hardcore muslims from the different jamaat the uh, brothers of jarh with tajrih but they don't have a monopoly on this all practicing people have this every group every group brawis dilbandis ikhwani sufi all groups may allah get rid of all these groups and bring us together on the heart of one man as it relates to the usul of the religion and get this ikhtilaf and tafarruq away from us Amen. Amen. but the ayah told everybody la tazakku anfusakum huwa a'lamu biman attaqa don't 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 praise yourselves allah knows best who has taqwa so how is anyone going to walk around and say well i'm doing everything that i'm supposed to do and allah what are you talking about you that prayer that you made this morning salatul fajr did you make fajr and if you did make fajr did you make it in the masjid and if you made it in the masjid do you remember what the imam read the prophet told the people sallallahu alaihi wasallam law ta'lamun ma a'lam la bakaytum kathira wa la dahiktum qalila you people know what i know you would cry more and laugh less So it's clearly we don't know what he knows because we joke around and we're not crying more. Mm. We're laughing more to the point that some of us sit down and we watch programs on TV, social media that just crack us up. And then I'm going to turn around and say, but I'm doing everything because I got jilbab and niqab and gloves and my thobe and I got a lehya and this. No, I may be doing certain things, but I'm doing other things that are opening up the door for problems like... عقوق الوالدين but Muhammad said I don't know any sin that Allah will cause a person to be held accountable for quicker than عقوق الوالدين so I know a lot of people who are in the masjid and they are talking to talk and seem like they're walking to walk but as it relates to the imam dukes they have zooch in the way of respect to the imams so we just try to get in where we fit in and just uh keep it moving man and just try to be people who if you recognize what's going on then you think a lot if you don't recognize we still are those people who say as a lot describe the believers in namal mu'minuna they are those people who they say sami'na wa atana we understand we don't understand we just have to worship allah whatever the case may be subhanallah so sheikh you know um we spoken about the asbab um and the reasons for why people go through trials and tribulations um but a question i have for you inshallah is that how should a muslim how should that person behave at the very first strike of a trial so as soon as it, something happens to them how should they behave in that first instance inshallah well there are a lot of things to do but at the top of the list the one thing that i will remind people of and this is critical because it's from the mishkat the mishkat of an nubuwa the well of prophecy the nabi sallallahu alaihi wasallam was walking and he saw a lady at uh, a grave she was at the grave and she was crying because she lost someone who had died and he gave her prophetic advice in a mm-hmm. soft way he told her be patient isbari wa tasbi be patient you get your reward from allah the lady in her state of being you know responding and upset and sad and mourning and remorseful she said to the nabi of islam the sayyid of bani adam sallallahu alaihi wasallam get away from me you don't know what i'm dealing with get out of here you don't know what i'm dealing with the prophet sallallahu what is that the ice cream truck or, or yeah, yeah, yeah. what what is that it's the ice cream truck <laughs> ice cream truck always jamming up the program man. the prophet said sallallahu alaihi wasallam and she said get out and he just left her He didn't stand over her head and say you this kufr you a kafir you disrespected me he took in consideration her condition mm. a person could be very happy very sad very angry and they react in that moment and the religion doesn't hold them responsible allahumma innaka afuun tuhibbu al-'afwa allah 
pardons you because you're extremely happy. Allahumma anta abdi wa ina rabbuka. That man said, well, Allah, you're my slave and I'm your Lord. Akhta min shiddat al farah. He made a mistake because he was so happy, mm. so angry. You come to the brother, you say to him, ya akhi taqila. He said, get out of here with that Shiite. That Shiite, like the movie. Get out of here with that Shiite. Yeah. You're not going to say to you, kafir. He didn't mean the Quran like that. The man is mad. Yeah. He's upset. So anyway, he just left. And the people came and said, hey, lady, you said that to the Nabi, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Oh, so she was remorseful. And Nadab told her, she, she didn't mean that. She went and told him, ya Rasulullah, I didn't know it was you. And then he answered the question you just put forth. And he told her, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, radiyallahu anha, the time to have patience is when the fitna, the catastrophe, the thing first jumps off. Don't have a knee-jerk reaction if you can help it. If you can just relax, fall back, take it easy. Don't divorce. Don't talk. Don't lash out. Sometimes you have to move. Hikmah necessitates that at that moment you have to move because it's about self-preservation. But generally... And as you get older, and I learned this, you have to pick your battles. I remember when I was your age, a Muslim in 1986, 22 years old, anybody who looked at me cross-eyed, anybody who pushed me, stepped on my shoes, I thought he was trying to put me into slavery. As an African-American, I was real sensitive to that, white or black. So if someone pushed me, looked at me, I just had this, you know, this, 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 I was hyped. Yeah. But now at this age, you know, I have to pick my battles. So... The answer is, the Muslim has to hold his horses. The sister has to hold her horses. The brother has to hold his horse. If you can just maintain some decorum about yourself when the thing first happens, good or bad. I mean, it's a fitna. Mm. It can be a fitna you created. Just take it easy. Let the dust settle. And then you'll be more effective in navigating and handling the situation, not allow it to take over you. SubhanAllah, it was very powerful. Uh, I think it's really, really important as well. I think there was a saying, I can't remember who said it, but it was something along the lines of a moment of anger causes a thousand moments of regret. And that's what happens, SubhanAllah, when you're angry at the first strike and you do things, when your mind isn't working, it's sometimes the damage that you do is, is irreplaceable. You, you can't go back on that. Yeah, for real. I've been around guns, and I know the damage that guns can do. Mm. If you ever go to a firing range or you're in the street and someone pulls out his hammer and he lets off some shots, mm. people don't know the power of a gun will freak out. And that's why when it goes off and the police come to uh, interview the witnesses, the witnesses don't remember because yeah. the violence was so much. Mm. Wallahi, wallahi. Some words people say, they're like that bullet. Mm. Once you shoot that gun, you can't say, oops, that bullet is going to do damage. Especially if it's hollow points, it's going to rip through flesh and bones. Same thing. Mm. A person gets upset, he gets mad, angry with his wife, and he starts to use verbiage mm. that no matter what, she'll never forgive him and never forget. She says to her present husband, my ex-husband is better than you. He will never forget that. So uh, when the jump off jumps off, we have to take it easy. Just mm -hmm. do the best of that we can just to remain calm, mm -hmm. remain calm and having patience. And that's why that hadith is from his Jawami al kalim the, mm -hmm. the ability that he had, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, to say a few words, but it has far-reaching meaning and implications and ahkam and adab. Mm -hmm. The time to be patient is when the catastrophe first hits. Just a quick thing, Sheikh. Um, you said you're 22 and 1986. Yeah, I wasn't even born in 1986, to be <laughs> honest with you. So, mashallah, you look very young. Allahumma back as far as just quickly. <laughs> I mean, I mean, you know what they say, brother. Yeah, I know. You know, I don't even have to say it anymore. You know what they say, right? I know Where are you from saying. originally, Salahuddin Aslah and Allah? Uh, Caribbean. Caribbean. All right. So, you know Caribbean what they say. Portugal, yeah, yeah, you know what they say, man. <laughs> yeah, what they what they say? What they I say? Teach me, teach me later. Yeah. It doesn't crack in it. Mashallah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Allah. Uh, just moving forward with the with the question. So someone has gone through that trial, that tribulation, or 
the first impact. What tips would you give for that person to remain patient? Just say, you know, people have cancer or illness or they've lost their job, many things. So d- during that period, what tips can you give for a person to remain patient? Yeah, before that, I would like to say, man, when you were said cancer, man, a lot of us, we get uh, really preoccupied and we think that the world uh, revolves around us, around mm-hmm. our Tao and our existence. When there are people out there going through some serious stuff, brother. Yeah. I came from Leeds yesterday to Birmingham and the brother who I came with sent me a message, said that his father has been put in an induced coma. So it helped me to look at what I was dealing with in a different light. So one thing we can do is always remember that there are always people, they have it worse off than you. Mm. The Uyghur Muslims, the Palestinians, the Iraqis, the Syrians. When I was in Lebanon, I uh, met a lady who, she was clearly suffering from mental uh, illness. She was crazy. She was Majnuna. May Allah help her. When I heard her story, I mean, it's amazing that she's still standing. If we have time, I'd tell that story. But um, some people have it rough, brother. They don't eat during the course of the day. So you always have to look around and say Mm. it's not as bad as others. The other thing is we have to understand, you know, just put it in perspective. You have the ability to handle whatever you're going through. Mm. So you can't take the punk move and commit suicide can't take the chump move and say, woe is me, woe is me, and start, you know, complaining and worrying about, you know, how and why would Allah have this to happen to you? Also, putting it into perspective is it may be from your own hands. You made the bed, so now you got to lie in the bed. So what? 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 What's after that? Lie in the bed, do your time, and keep it moving. So a lot of things a person could do, man, just to know that if he's being tried, it can be a sign that Allah loves him. If that if Allah loves someone, he um, tries him. It could be a sign that he is on a level of deen. He can't state and believe emphatically that he's on that level, but it could be a sign that uh, his deen is at a place where, you know, he's on the way of the sunnah of the anbiya and the rusul, salawatullahi wa salamuhu alayhi. Whatever the case is, whatever the case is, we shouldn't, challenge Allah, we should know that we have a Lord who is Al-Hakim. Mm-hmm. And his hikmah means he does everything in the right way. Mm-hmm. That's hikmah. Mm-hmm. Putting things in the proper place. Allah knows who to give children to, who to keep barren. He knows who to cause his child to die. He knows all of that. Mm-hmm. So again, when it happens... The one who has a tawakkul and yaqeen and iman, he just says, hey, I'm like a waraka. I'm just a piece of paper. Allah, you say, you me. Come on, your shat. Wherever my Lord sends me, that's where I go. That's, that's it. The end game is jannah. The end game is not jinnah. Or Allah put us in jinnah. Jinnah with the kasra for my English-speaking brothers my, the ajim from amongst us, Jinnah, Allah give us Jinnah. You're talking about, oh Allah give us the Jinn. We don't want the Jinn. It's Jinnah with a Fatah. So that's what we're trying. We're trying to wind up in the paradise. So just be patient and deal with it, inshallah. So you know, Sheikh, um, yeah, and some people, when they go through trials and tribulations, um, they tend to complain to others. And they kind of leave, you know, um, complaining to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you know, uh, expressing their distress, etc. to Allah Azza wa Jal. Um, what advice would you have for those type of people um, who kind of only just want to, every time they go through something, they're telling others, this is what's happening to me, this is what's happening to me, this is what's happening to me. What kind of advice do you have for those people? Especially in the day of age of social media as well. It's all over social media, yeah, you're right. Yeah, it's a big problem. It's permissible to complain to others, but... You know, you have to go to the door of the king of kings and the creator of everything. Because when you go to the doors of his creation, they may come through for you and they may not come through for you. They may come through for you and then they'll hit you in your face somewhere down the line with a menno. You remember I did this for you? I did that for you? So the believer is the one who's connected to Allah. 
Now that's, you know, basic and fundamental. And everybody knows that. I didn't say anything deep or heavy, but we don't always do it. Especially when our feet are over the fire. Yaqub, salawatullahi wa salam, was dealing with all that stuff he was dealing with. And he said, إِنَّمَا أَشْكُوا بَثِّي وَحُزْنِي إِلَى اللَّهِ وَأَعْلُمُ مِنَ اللَّهِ مَا لَا تَعْلَمُونَ I do my complaining about my sorrow and this thing that afflicted me. I complain to Allah. And I know about Allah what you don't know to his sons. And other people were not knowledgeable. And Allah commanded us in the Quran, commanded the Nabi, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, فَاصْبِرُ صَبْرٍ جَمِيلًا Be patient with the patience that's Jamil. The Mufassirun of the Quran give different interpretations of that. But the best one, inshallah, is the one that means and says, صَبْرُ Jamil is when you don't complain to anyone. Allah is the mushtaka. I'm only complaining to Allah. You get on a bus, and the lady is getting on the bus. Bus driver is just being courteous, non-Muslim, courteous and kind. He says to a good morning. He says to the lady getting on a bus, the Muslim lady, hey, good morning. How are you today? Oh, my husband doesn't love me. He's going to get another wife. And all my children, they don't do this. The dude be like, yeah, 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 ain't trying to hear all that. Come on, get on the bus, lady. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But there are people like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There are aunties that I know. All they do is complain. The water is, the glass is half empty. If you don't love me, oh, you believe it? Then that's all they do. And that's somebody's fitna. That's someone else's trial. Her son-in-law, her son, her daughter-in-law, and so forth and so on. So we should try to complain to Allah Azza wa Jal. Because Allah Ta'ala is the one who answers the dua. And he's the one who knows about everything. So if a person has a problem, he calls on Allah. Allah said, I will answer your dua. Creation, they may not answer your dua. But at the same time, I have to say this, especially during the time that we're living in. I have no problem with sharing with people my own personal experiences, especially if I think it's an ibrah and a daros, a lesson in that. Now, actually, I have to have some decorum, you know, some things I'm not going to share with people. But doing um, this thing with corona, I was struggling. Mm. I was struggling. A lot of things were going on. I had made a transition from Liverpool to Leeds. I was in Leeds by myself. And my wife and kids were in Birmingham. And my other wife was stuck like Chuck in Nigeria. She went to see her moms. Then Corona came. Then the moms got sick. She couldn't come. And then when she was about to come, Boko Haram, they hijacked the train, took 300 people into the jungle. That happened recently, but we don't hear it because... In Africa, when things happen, black lives don't matter to the world. Let it happen in Ukraine, Ukraine, one of these European countries. And lo and behold, you're going to know every nick and knack about the situation. But anyway, while I was in Leeds, it was a new community, and I'm trying to find my foot in. But not being able to cook, being in that house by myself, I was just there. And I was really not struggling, but I found myself really... Um, not short-tempered, but I didn't tolerate a lot of nonsense. When, as a dai, I know I have to be tolerant to people in the community. Mm -hmm. So we have some brothers and people in our community who have, you know, the Muslims, they have Asperger's. You know Asperger's, right? Mm. Asperger's syndrome, yeah. Oh, yeah, 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 I got you. What is it called? He said that. <laughs> Asperger's, huh? Asperger's syndrome, yeah, yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. I, I call it Asperger's, man. <laughs> so... <laughs> not making fun brother no, 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 of course. but you you have to deal with people who have all kinds of issues man yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. and you have to be gentle because the prophet was like that mm. so I like said but i found myself i found myself not i just was always uptight mm -hmm. until i went to umrah you know i took those um that that booster yeah. In order to go to Hajj and Umrah. So I took the booster. If I die and all that stuff, Fisa Bililah. It's another way to get Shahad, inshallah. I'll be a Shaheed, inshallah. inshallah. But that third booster, it really messed me up, man. I thought I was going to check out. I had a constant headache, and I just wasn't myself, you know? So, you know, with this, with, with, with this, just the whole thing, brother, I am not saying just turn to Allah and just, just like that, generic. No. We need people that we have to talk to. 
right? So when we have problems, we have to offload. Because if you don't offload, what happened is what happened to a lot of African-American uh, older men, like my dad and people like that, who were taught, don't cry. Don't let it out. Salahuddin, aslahanallah, I'm sure you can relate to this. In yeah. our culture, men don't cry. No, you have to be Superman. Nah, 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 nah. You know, Superman, not like that. I need some people I have to be able to talk to. And that's why it's important, you know, in our deen, and this is a tremendous nama that we have this brotherhood, man. That we have people who won't judge us and they won't look at you because you can get up on the minbar and give a khutbah and people look and say, oh, that guy. No, everybody has uh, insecurities and moments of weakness. So if you have to talk to someone, uh, choose the right people to talk to. And when you talk and offload, don't complain about the qadr of Allah. Talk just to get it off of your chest because that stuff will weigh you down. Mm. Trying to be Superman up in his joint 24-7. It's not healthy. Mm. Just a quick point what you mentioned in terms of speaking to people. Uh, I'm from Loughborough, Hamda, just, just around the corner. And uh, we had a situation where a brother, he was very silent. Couldn't hear from him. He was going through his own issues. And um, a lot of people, they didn't even go to him as well because he was a person that kind of stuck by himself. And uh, subhanAllah, on Eid day, he committed suicide. And yeah, no one went to him, no one spoke to him, he didn't speak to anyone else, he kept everything in. So speaking to people is something that I advocate, I tell people yeah. to do. Brothers, sisters, exactly. whatever, you know, brothers, speak to brothers that you trust, sisters, speak to people that you trust, people that care for you, and that will help you a lot. Don't complain and whatnot, but speak to them. And even myself, like, as a, I'm, a, I'm a counselor by profession, um, and just like you were saying, Sheikh, as well, like uh, the journey I had when I was studying, mm. I had to learn a lot about myself. And we started off with maybe 25 to 30 people in the class, and we finished with maybe six to seven people. SubhanAllah. Because everybody just jumped just off there. When off. they started learning about themselves, wow. they were gone. And I learned about myself and I learned a lot. I had to look, you know, self reflection. Um, and I understood after, you know, you can't be that type of hard person. You have to change. You have mm. to, you know, for the sake of your children. For the sake of many different things, you know what I'm saying? And obviously, yeah. again, offloading is very important. Even the counsellor, you know, uh, as a counsellor myself, you have to have a supervisor who you go to and you speak to and you offload. Because even the counsellor, they get affected as well. Mm. SubhanAllah. The counsellors are psychiatrists. They have their own therapists. Mm. Yeah. Giving dawah ilallah. This is like sometimes like a policeman. Policeman is out there in those streets, especially in New York and places like that where we come from. It's a rough job. It's a crazy job. Yeah. So the cop comes home and he can't have a viable, healthy relationship with his partner, with his uh, wife, because he brings his job home. Mm. So that it can easily happen to du'at. Yeah. You are a candle. You're burning light for other people, but you're burning yourself. You're rough with your own wife. You're not gentle with your own kids. But you get behind that microphone, you get you know behind that camera, and you're giving all that beautiful speech about rahma, and your wife is looking looking at you talking about really man, really man. <laughs> Last thing I want to mention about that, Ahi, just really quick because this is a problem: is that our children, our babies, Prophet says, "Sallallahu alaihi wasallam, rabbukum." There is no year except that the one that comes after it is worse than the one that preceded it until you meet your Lord, until Yom Al-Qiyamah. So every year gets worse and worse and worse. So we're at 2022. The millennials, this is a tough time to be a teenager. Yeah. This is a tough time to be a teenager. So when we look at our kids, they are faced with all kinds of, you know, challenges that we didn't have when we were young. And I just want to say to the listening audience, especially if you have younger kids, Stay on top of your kids' mental health. Mm. You know, trying to overwhelm them with, you know, LGBT teachings and things like that. And also child molestation. Mm. Kids are getting molested and bullied. Mother, the father has to be up in the ear and in, 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 in the life of that child. Anybody touching you inappropriately? Anybody bullying you at school? And yet, you know, and the, teach, and, the, and the students as well, and the mantra said that you're connected to. I always tell the kids in my madrasa, like I tell my kids, anybody touches you in a way that you don't like, you let me know. Because mm. I'm going to go and I'm going to deal with it. And I say that right now because I'm aware of a situation recently 
They put out a press release concerning this. I'm aware of a situation where this cat was molesting kids, man. He was molesting kids, man. And he had everybody fooled. He was molesting kids. And so when I saw the kids that were being molested, they knew they could talk to me, but they didn't talk to me. Mm. Because, you know, the cat was grooming them. them, And they don't know what's going on. They don't know what's going on. So... Uh, we have to be balanced in everything. That's the siratul mustaqim that we ask Allah to guide us to. Don't complain to everybody. Complain to Allah first and foremost, primarily. But if you have to complain to other human beings, then do so. Because the Prophet did that. Sallallahu alayhi wasallam Came into the house, uh, into his tent after performing hajj. He went out and they were not going to let them perform the hajj or the umrah. Kuffar said, no, sul of al hudaybiyah he, he was going to perform hajj, and they said, no. So he told the companions, take off your ihrams. And the companions didn't do it. Not in disobedience to him, but they were like, yo, let's go deal with them. Let's meet them at the door. So Rasulullah didn't like that they didn't listen. He became angry at that. And he went into the tent, and his wife saw his face say, what's wrong? May my mother and my father be sacrificed. He said, I'm telling them to do something, and they don't listen. Not in disobedience. She said, Ya Rasulullah, why don't you take off your ihram and then you go out to them? And that's what he did. So he offloaded, told the lady what our mother, what his anger was about, and, and, and she took that and advised him. Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. She's lesser than him. She's the wife. She's a woman. And he went out and did it. So the Prophet did it. Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And when he was dying, he was saying, Wa ra'sa. Wa ra'sa, oh my head, oh my head. They say, Ya Rasulullah, why, why are you complaining? He said, I get the trial and the pain comparable to two of you. My pain is worse, more, heavier than you. Why? Because they're going to get the maqam al mahmud and al jannah. So he's from Beni Adam. And from as a result of that, he's, he's going to be prone to the weaknesses that Benny Adam are prone to. You go to sleep, you get hungry, you're afraid, all those issues. You make mistakes. So in order to get the maqam al-mahmood, that's a place that only he will have, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And you have to be absolutely clean there. Anyone who has a dot of kibr, just a dot, won't enter into Jannah. That dirt, just the dot. So what about all that other stuff people did? So Allah's Rasul, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, went through that so that he'll occupy that position, Haqqa, although he's the Nabi and the Rasul, Sayyid the Bani Adam. But he was saying, Wa Ra'sa. And when they asked him about it, he offloaded and he told them. So we got to stay balanced, man. We got to stay balanced. So you know, Sheikh, you know, when I was, um, when I first became a Muslim, um, alhamdulillah the brothers that are around they kind of helped me to uh, kind of instill that love for the ulama for the shuyukh and du'at and stuff like this um, and subhanallah you know there was a time where I used to think that the du'at and again the shuyukh that they never sinned never sinned at all or they never had any trials or any tribulations and the question that we've got for you today as well is that you know many Muslims are like this and what happens is uh, they kind of put them to uh, a level, like a really, really, really high level on a pedestal, etc. Um, which again is, is is okay. But then, if they ever hear or see any kind of mistake, then they bring that person right down to the ground. That's what we see all the time on YouTube. You know, everyone's trying to refute that person, talk about that person in, you know, in a in a, in a derogatory manner or whatever. Mm-hmm. Um, so, what advi- what kind of what are your thoughts on that, Sheikh? That you can can maybe explain to the people. Like I mentioned, Akhi Salahuddin Aslahan Allah. You just have to be balanced, man. The Sirat al Mustaqim. Ahbib Habibaka Honin Ma Asang Yakum Baridaka Yomin Ma. Love the person you love moderately. The day may come where you'll hate him. And hate the person you hate moderately. The day may come where he becomes your Habib. You have to just be balanced. You have to know Kulu bin Adam Khattaun wa khayru khattain at Tawabun. All of Adam's children make mistakes. And the best of them are those who make Toba. All of them. So some people have been blessed to know that already. 
at the very beginning. Some people come to learn it, and some people don't know it at all. So they go overboard. I think a lot, and this is a nema that Allah bestowed upon me, is that in Jahid, he had a cousin, a first cousin. His name was Jack Tatum. He used to play for the Oakland Raiders. They were a formidable NFL football team in America. They used to crush other teams. And, be, and he was the hardest hit in free safety in the history. Check him out, number 32. He rearranged your snap box. <laughs> you know, when he hit the opposing players, he put people in comas, man. Yeah. Go look at him, Jack Tatum. It's my first cut of him. He paralyzed people, literally. Wow. In real life, he paralyzed people on that football field. So because he was a professional football player, it gave us access to meet a lot of the football players like O.J. Simpson. And yeah, O.J. did it, man. O.J. did it, man. <laughs> I met <mean>, O.J. <laughs> no, I don't know if he did it, man. I don't know. In our religion, we got to say they found him not guilty. They're not guilty. But because of his celebrity, I got a chance to meet a lot of athletes. And uh, athletics were a religion to me. I mean, my mother, my father... My sisters, I think my sisters and my mother, they could have been referees because they knew the game. Mm. Basketball, football, baseball. We would watch that stuff religiously, man. So because we were exposed to other players and athletes, when I came into Islam, I wasn't one of those people who was smitten by celebrities and shiuch and stuff. I'm, that's not just I, because I've seen that, that before. So unfortunately in Canada and other places I've seen where Muslim girls were throwing themselves to Drake, where, you know, they were trying to be, um, what do you call them? Um, fl not flunkies. What's that? The ladies who hang around famous people just to be there Gr for them. Groupies. Groupies. groupies I'll say, yeah. Muslim girl was jumping on Drake's car when he was driving away. And they're there waiting for him to come off stage and just hang out with him for a day or two. Nah, the Muslim, he says, Allahu Akbar. That's our aqidah, that's our deen. We don't say that the Prophet وسلم, is the greatest and things like that. We say, no, as it relates to a human being, he's akmal, but even that, he's a human being. He goes to sleep and all those kind of things. I don't know if you guys are aware, but I'm sure you're aware Lady of the Lady from Heaven, that movie. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. There's a brother who's up in the north who are, um, was upset with one of the American duads who came recently. It was a lot of unnecessary fitna. That brother makes mistakes. Both of those brothers, I make mistakes, you make mistakes. But it was just a frenzy, man, and people were misbehaving. So this brother up in the north wanted to show that this brother from America was incompetent. So he was talking about his inability to read the Quran without mistakes, which happens to all of us sitting here. Mm. Happens to you, me, all of us, right? But it's going to be even more because the brother is in the public's eye. Yeah. But uh, um, the brother, subhanAllah, had mentioned me. I don't have anything to do with what's going on. But he said, one of the brothers said, like that African man who's in the masjid and leaves, talks bad about Abu Hanifa. I didn't say anything bad about Abu Hanifa when I spoke about Abu Hanifa years ago. 45 minutes, I talked about the virtues of Abu Hanifa. Everything in Sir Alam al Nubala to Al Imam al Zahabi, things that are positive. Everything beautiful. But then at the end, 10 minutes, I wanted to clarify don't call him Al Imam al Azam. You guys didn't know that I was going to make this point, but I'm going to ask both of you who's the Imam al Azam? Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he prayed with all the prophets in Baytul Maqdis. He's the Imam al azam And Imam Abu Hanifa is an Imam Azim. And that brother, after all of these years, he threw my name out there and he called me that African. I don't know, it has some racist, you know, undertones to that. I don't know. Yeah, I'm African. That's right. So I dress like this. But he was still mad at what I didn't even say. Mm. I said, Abu Hanifa, the scholar said this about him. And I mentioned two or three things and told people, don't go overboard. So some of us, Ahi Salahuddin, Aslah and Allah, he, they, they just extreme in their love and their hate. Mm. So yeah. if the sheikh, you know, he comes 
and he has Isbal. We had uh, sheikhs come, and brothers saw the sheikh had Isbal. It freaked them out. The sheikh took from his lihya. It freaked them out. The sheikh's wife or daughter is studying in Cambridge, and she ain't wearing, she's not wearing hijab properly. It freaked them out. And this is unfair for us, people here in the West, holding each other to this unreasonable high standard. Mm. Can't sit with the innovators. What are you talking about, man? Get a life, man, and pump your brakes and slow down. Everybody's making mistakes. Everybody. They see some of the great ulama of our time. They see some of their children. And the children, the, the son is Haliq from the great scholars of our time. I'm talking about the great scholars. And they see that and they just are fixated. Oh, this sheikh's son ain't got no beard. The kind of mother. And, and, and what else? Let's get on with life, man. Mm. So we have to stay balanced, man, and get rid of that, you know, celebrity thing and that sheikh worship. Sheikh glow in the dark. The sheikh literally glows in the dark. A brother came two and a half, three hours. Yeah, three hours from somewhere all the way to meet the brother that came from America. And he only wanted to ask him one question. And that question was, do you think I should get married now or not? I came just to ask you that question. Now, what his need was, I don't know. May Allah bless him. Maybe he was trying to do what the people did in the past. But, man, you could have stayed way up there for that, man call this man using optic fibers and stuff like that or you could have used technology man you ain't got to use all that money and petrol is, is, is expensive these days <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. but his knee i'm not putting him down yeah. i'm just saying come on man come on man so we need to stay balanced and we need to know we need to know and i have to say this in the asian culture and they don't have a monopoly on this but they raise their children up believing the movie sob is always right and the Mulvi Saab doesn't know what he's talking about. The Mulvi Saab may be beating a kid. And that's why they say religion can be an opiate. It makes you suspend your intellect, sending your kid to school, and someone's beating your kid, and you know that, and condone it, and endorse it. You're supposed to be a person who says, anybody touch my kid, I'm going to light him up. I'm going to put fire on him. Not that I'm encouraging violence or anything, but there has to be a price to pay. Yeah. So stay balanced with the ulama. And then what happens when the scholar that you love makes a mistake? In Brixton, we had some bona fide scholars. I'm not talking about strong students of knowledge. We had bona fide scholars who came when I was in Brixton, the imam there, in 95. And this, 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 they were eating, a few of them. And they left a lot of food. They were wasting food. They were wasting food. Some of the brothers was tripping. Oh, they shit wasting food. Because, you know, like for me, if I go out and there's some food left over, I'm packing that joint in a doggy bag. And we're going to eat that for breakfast. I'm going to make sandwiches for my kids. I work hard for this money, brother. <laughs> yes. So the shit was wasting all the food. I was like, come on, man. Come on, brother. Relax with that. Uh, everybody, human beings, I'm not trying to put the shit down. I know. If a person is a hater, they'll say, look at Abu putting the ulama down. I'm not putting the ulama down. I'm saying to our youngsters and to all of us, stay balanced. Mm -hmm. Our example is the Nabi of Islam, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, who said, as I said earlier, say you believe and then be upright. Mm -hmm. Tell me something I can only ask of you. Say you believe and be upright 24-7. Nobody else can do that. Not Abu Bakr, not Umar, not Uthman, not Ali, radiallahu anhu. Only the Nabi of Islam, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Barakallahu feek, Ustad. Um, we spoke earlier about some of the trials that you've been through. What we wanted to know is, what has been your biggest trial so far to date? I mean, that would require me to really sit down and to listen to, uh, to really think, man. But off the cuff, just off the dome, just like that, we don't have all day for me to sit and figure that out. But off the dome, the top of my dome, I would say losing three kids. Losing three kids. My daughter, Ramla, who was born in Saudi Arabia. And she got meningitis. And we struggled with her as she was growing four months old till she was 22. And she checked out. And then my boy, Al-Harith, my man. Sweet kid, man. 
He was playing basketball with his brother, Dehya. They were on a basketball court, and he just fell over. The next day, he would have been 14 years old in the Gregorian calendar. He just fell over. And then this Ramadan, the last day of Ramadan, that Sunday, my boy Abdullah called me and said, Yo, Abby, Abdurrahman, he died. And Abdurrahman, out of all of my sons, he was the one who's like the glue and the, 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 the adhesive that keeps all of his siblings together. He graduated from the university. He had, he had charm and charisma, mashallah. He, had, um, he was a people's person, intelligent. He, he was like a chef. His crib was nice. He used to be sending me, sending me pictures of his, the food that he would make. Say, happy, you got you to gotta learn how to cook. When I was in Leeds, I would always be saying, complaining. Hey, man, this girl better hurry up and get over here, man, before I get married again because I can't cook. I was compl- and he would send me these, these, these uh, dishes that he made, and they were light, nice, like Gordon Ramsay. And that Jamie Oliver dude, that's how my son was cooking. His crib, the way it was. He just was an artist, man. Thespian as well. So when I found out that he had died that Sunday, the next day was the Eid. So I'm expected to go out there and give a celebratory khutbah. And I was discombobulated. I was off the square. I was disoriented. I didn't tell my wives, neither one of them. I didn't tell any of my children. I didn't tell anybody in the community because I didn't want people's aid to get messed up. And I'm like, man, how I'm going to do this? But I was like, man, I'm built for these moments, inshallah. I'm built for these moments. I just kept telling myself, steel sharp and steel. Diamonds are sharp with pressure. They shine. And that's I just kept saying that. I went out there and I gave that khutbah. But when the people started coming to me saying, Eid Mubarak, Eid Kareem, I was just in a, in a daze, in a funk. I just want to go home in these and lay down. Maybe it was depression. Maybe it was sorrow. I just wanted to go lay down, man. I didn't even want to go to Birmingham to spend the rest of the day with my babies. And then I told my wife, I'm really tired. I'm really tired. I'm going to stay in Birmingham. And the kids have more than enough to do. She said, all right. And then I told them the next day. So that was tough, man. Uh, losing those three kids. But even with that, the Prophet says, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, anyone who loses um, three kids, there'll be a hijab for him from the hellfire. Can we emphatically state that that's going to happen to you? You can't emphatically state because you may die as a kafir. May Allah give us a thabat on the deen. Oh, yeah. But that helps to take away the pain. Inshallah, we'll meet them again. Sure. This is the qadr of Allah. Sure. So I would say, Losing my babies, man. Losing my babies was rough. It was tough. Especially, um, I caught this boy, Abdul, Abdul Rahman al Awwal. And then I have another Abdul Rahman al Thani. The only one I did that with. Abdul Rahman al Awwal, Abdul Rahman al Thani. And I did that a long time ago. Because they do that in Africa. Name your you know, multiple children to the same father with the same name. But you say al Awwal al Thani al Thadith. And then from the hikmah of Allah, he took. Abdurrahman al awwal away. But I still have a thani where I have the tahqiq of that hadith. Inna habb al asma'i lillahi Abdullah wa Abdurrahman wal harith wa hammam. So I have those four. So Abdurrahman al awwal die and al harith die. The two kids from that hadith, those two die. May Allah Azza wa put them in the Jannah of Firdaus. Amen. Barakallahu feek. I really appreciate you sharing that. SubhanAllah. Inshallah, I think um, we'll end it with, with one point, inshallah. As we are called Glad Tidings Podcast, we always ask the guests, can you please leave us with some Glad Tidings for the Ummah, inshallah. Yeah, I think this is a, an important issue in terms of, you know, the Muslim is optimistic. The Prophet met that lady and said, what's your name? Showing that he's not Hazar Nazar, he doesn't know the Ilm al ghayb if he was, he wouldn't ask her that question. He said, what's your name? She said, Asiya. I'm disobedient. He said, Bal anti Jamila. No, you're beautiful. Mm. He, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, make the salat of al-istisqa for the rain. And after making the prayer, he would turn his, his uh, what you call that? His bisht. What do you call that? His sh- 
Shell, what do you call that? Shell, shell. His shawl, he would turn it inside out, mm. take his hat and put it inside out mm. as a expression of optimism. Mm. Things are going to change. The rain is going to come. He would go down one street on the day of the Eid and come down, come home down another street. I'm going down this street and Ramadan is over and I'm coming down this street and all those bad habits that I had before Ramadan, I'm on a new page. So we have to be optimistic and we have to know that the future is for Islam and Islam is the future. The Prophet told the people, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, that the time is coming that there will be no house except Islam will enter into that house. Whether it is made out of straw, stone, whatever, mortar, Islam is going to enter into that house. Meaning people are going to be Muslims, not just the word Islam enters into the house. Islam is going to spread. He told the people, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, inna allaha zawali al-ar fara'aytu mashariqaha wa magharibaha wa inna mulka ummati sayabluku ma zuwiyali minha. Allah brought the whole world together for me in front of my face. He shrunk it so I can see the whole world. The whole east and west, he brought it in front of me. And he said, verily, the dominion of, the dominion of my ummah is going to reach everywhere that I've been able to witness. So we have to realize that we're on a winning team. I don't know about you guys, but growing up, I played a lot of sports. I just remember two years of my young life when I was on a losing team. It wasn't that good. <laughs> it wasn't that good. But other than that, I would say 95% of my younger life playing sports, I was a champion. You know? I used to play that white boy song, We Are The Champions. You know what I'm talking about? That's what they do in America. I still remember that. So... The B hasn't changed. The B still goes on. It came into Islam. Not because Abu Osama came into Islam is an indication that Islam is the truth. No. I came into Islam and I'm clearly still on that vibe of Chabu being with the winning team. So. No doubt with the I'm winning team. I jibin min amr al mu'min. Wala yakunu dhalika illa li mu'min. The affair of the believer is amazing. That's only for the believer. Alhamdulillah. Because if good happens, he shukr is good for him. Bad happens, fitna, this and that. He's patient, and that's good for him. So, brothers and sisters, don't become despondent. From the major sins is being a person who gives up having hope of Allah. From the Kabair, look at an Imam uh, Al Dhahabi's book, Kitab Al Kabair. One of the chapters is Al Ayas Min Rohi La, Wala Yais Min Rohi Lahi Illa Qom Al Kafi. The people who give up the hope. Of Allah's mercy are the people, you know, they despair mm. of Allah's mercy are the people who disbelieve. But this is a time of a tamhiz. Allah is test testing the people. And the cream is going to rise to the top. And what we all have to do is do our best to be on the winning team properly on the, with the firqa to najiyah. And when I say that, I don't say that as a mantra. And I don't say that be with this group or that group. Just be with what the Prophet sallallahu intended when he said that. La tazalu ta'ifatum min ummati ala al-haqqi min surah. There will always be a group of people in my ummah. They will be victorious. And it doesn't hurt them and harm them. Those who try to chirk them. Those who go against them. Those in opposition to them. So our job is to try to be with that group. And that is not a group with a head over it and a secretary, and they have a name over the masjid, or they walk around with a drum hidden in Firqa Tanajah, Firqa Tanajah. No. It's people practicing Islam the right way. May Allah make us of those people. Amen. I mean. Sheikh, I just want to say a personal Jazakumullah uh, khairah for coming on the podcast, inshallah. Um, Allah has been very beneficial. Um, I've learned a lot myself. Alhamdulillah. Um, yeah, and it's made me just kind of go home and just check myself, inshallah. Um, Barakallah fikum as And obviously on behalf of Mubashirun as well, um, we all uh, want to thank you as well. Jazakumullah khairah. Uh, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, raise your rank and raise your levels and Ameen. protect you and your family and give all of your children. Alone. Uh, Ameen. Alone. Ameen. 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 And likewise, man, I feel the same way about you guys. Got nothing love but love for younger brothers and sisters. We have to do this process of passing the baton to you cats. Not like the old heads in the masjid. They don't want to pass the baton to the young brothers. And not like the young brothers who want to push the old heads over to the side. And the old heads built the masjids. 
the old heads were out here getting their feet dirty when you were not even born. And then you're a Johnny come lately and you got your face up in the source right now and you excommunicating people, making tekfir of people, making tabdi of people and not appreciating what the elders did for us. You know that I in the Quran, the people make dua to Allah, وَلَا تَجْعَلْ فِي قُلُوبِنَا غِلًّا لِلَّذِينَ آمِنُوا Don't put in our hearts hatred and rancor and enmity, animosity to those people who are believers, you know? And, and, and also, the ayah said, don't make any trouble for us, forgive us. And those, الَّذِينَ سَبَقُونَ iman. I got respect for your father and grandfather. Even if they're not on my maslak, for an example. I respect them people. Because they came here, first generation Muslims, and they laid it down. We're getting these buildings. So may Allah accept it from you. Another thing, Salahuddin, you coming from the Caribbean, I got a special connection. I'm always telling people, Black Lives Matter, man. Not the Marxist ethos and all that. Not that. Mm. Not that. But being a revert. I got respect for that. Reavers have special virtues, and people who were raised in Islam have special bir- virtues. Both sides, both sides, they have it, and we have to meet in the middle. Inshallah. We'll end it then, inshallah. I just want to say, uh, Sheikh, I love you for the sake of Allah. I mean, and I pray we are all raised on Yawm Al Qiyamah with Ameen. the prophets and the martyrs, and we enter Jannah together. Allahumma Amin. Amin. سبحانك اللهم وبحمدك اشهد ان لا اله الا انت استغفرك واتوب اليك السلام عليكم ورحمه الله